Let's celebrate this month. Let's celebrate this week. Welcome to the Big Weekly Blend Podcast, the companion to our Big Weekly Blend magazine. Hey, everybody. We hope that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, It is the weekend of Thanksgiving. Can you believe it? And Black Friday is over, so we're all happy about that. Uh, This is airing the Sunday, and then we're looking at, hey, uh, next week it is, you know, we're going to have Cyber Monday where people shop online, and then Giving Tuesday, which is really exciting when we look at giving to nonprofits. And um, we've got a lot of other holidays we're going to be talking about on today's Big Weekly Blend, and you know that when it is the fourth weekend or the fourth Sunday of the month, we have Joey Stuckey back on the show with us. Joey is the official music ambassador for Macon, Georgia, which is the southern rock capital of the world. He's an award-winning blind guitarist, a songwriter, a singer, a composer, a producer, radio and TV personality, music columnist, educator, and sound engineer. Welcome back, Joey. How are you? I am well, my friend. Anytime I get to spend time with you, I mean, what a treat. Hey, it is a treat. And listen, you know what? Thanksgiving, now there's leftovers everywhere. What is your favorite part of this time of year when it comes to food? Well, you know, it's a, that's a great question. My wife is an excellent cook, and um, and that works both for and against us. <laughs> and it's mm. hard to lose weight when you're a good cook, right? But she does uh, what I consider remarkable uh, dressing. So some people have stuffing, and here in the South we have dressing. And so uh, they're, they're, they're similar. Um, uh, stuffing typically uses white bread, uh, whereas dressing uses cornbread. But one of the things my wife does, it's unusual. She uses sage and celery and all these things. Uh, that's pretty typical. But one thing she does that's unusual and a recipe that's been handed down from her grandmother uh, is that she puts oysters in her dressing. Mm. And the interesting part is that you actually can't see them uh, or really taste them that much. In other words, it doesn't taste like you've got oysters in it. Uh, it just adds a little something, something. But it's very finely chopped and, and very, you know, kind of uh, in there. But it does not taste like seafood or anything odd like that. So it's a, it's an interesting it's an interesting recipe. But, uh, you know, ever since we've been uh, married, that's what we've been she's been making. And, it, and I love it. I Hey, there it is. I know a lot of people who do the oysters, um, even over... Christmas. I mean, Thanksgiving gets duplicated over Christmas pretty much yeah. when it comes to food, depending on I've your friend, you know, beliefs. I, yeah, I've got a friend that does the traditional turkey on Thanksgiving and then does like a um, uh, 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 like a, a prime rib on Christmas just to have a little something different. But we we kind of duplicate um, here and it's it's fun. I like it. And then we've got Hanukkah. I mean, we've got all these different holidays. And I think that's the thing. It's Kwanzaa. I think celebrate them all. I mean, why not? Uh, Oh, absolutely. I I love to cross-culturize myself with food. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we we used to, we used to have some some friends. They're still friends of ours. But we we just, uh, since COVID, you know, things have been kind of kind of weird. But uh, we used to gather every uh, Christmas and Hanukkah. And we go to her her house uh, for Christmas. I mean, for Hanukkah. And have potato latkes and and play with the dreidel, and uh, and then they come over to our house and uh, sing Christmas carols and eat Christmas dinner with us. And uh, and my my wife also makes uh, bacon wrapped asparagus spears, which are pretty tasty, I must say. And mm. that was a big hit. So yeah, so I, I I say celebrate anything you can. I, I you know the bacon wrapped asparagus spears. That's something Nancy. That would be the only way for me to get her to eat asparagus. Um, I, well, have I mean, to, you can always, you can always doctor- tie her down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been hard. Like uh, our friends Michael, um, he was able to get her to eat Brussels sprouts because he put some cheese, and you know, just we have to doctor things and not yeah, tell it's, her. It's like it's like hiding the pill in the dog's peanut butter. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. I'm very familiar with that. You yeah, know, yeah. And, and and speaking of that, hey, you know, as we head into winter season, um, you know, we've got to take care of our birds out there and. Um, I just want to remind people that outside you may have leaves on the ground and all of that, depending on where you live. Um, it is actually good to leave them there for the fireflies to nest and do things and for other critters. So you may want to not overdo taking all your leaves away. 
um, obviously driveways and stuff like that uh, over the fall season for your wildlife and your backyard and your birds because they need to get all those seeds so that they can get over uh, into the winter. Now, some areas, this could be winter. You never know where you are. I, went to, I know over Thanksgiving, I've been through snow and all of that. So um, that's the other thing is to uh, see if you can put some bird seed out for the birds and um, and some fresh water. Hopefully it won't freeze. But um, if you can if you can do some bird seed, uh, they would be very grateful for that extra bit of protein during the cold months. So now, I don't Lisa, know. You're, you're just... an animal. You're kind of an animal expert, at least compared to me. And uh, yeah. is it true that rice will make birds explode? Yeah, that's not good. It's uh, don't do that. Don't. It okay. is not good. No. You know, and, and I think, you know, people talk about that for weddings, right? And, uh, yeah. oh, we're in that season too, Joey, where everyone's getting hitched over family gatherings, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, my my parents got married on December 21st. This year will be their 64th wedding anniversary. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that yeah, is, 60, yeah. that's huge. It's, it's wow. a pretty big deal. And, uh, and, and then they, when they and get they, to 64, they can go, when we are 64 married. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it's a good good song by uh, Paul McCartney. I mean, it was part of the Beatles, but I, he kind of wrote that. You can tell it's a McCartney song. Um, but yeah, so I mean, but but I have always heard, but, but my wife and I didn't know if the rice thing was true or not, but we decided to err on the side of caution. And uh, yeah. so we did not do, we did not do rice. We did uh, bubbles and we did uh bells. Oh, that's more fun anyway. Oh, that, yeah, you we, know what? That's really cool. Petals yeah. are so much more fun and bubbles are fun. Um, the other thing is... Um, don't feed ducks bread and geese. They do not like it. It also swells in their bellies. So if you go to a park and you want to feed ducks, there's actually like duck pellets. And, you know, they they don't eat yeast. You know, you don't need things that are going to swell up when they hit water like right. rice. Yeah. And rice is also very um, heavy. You know, that's not a natural thing. Like ducks and birds and things, they eat grains and that are from the grass, like, you know, our rice is a grain, but it's, we're doing something different to it than what they would find in the wild. So um, I would definitely look at, you know, if you really want to feed ducks and things, go to a pet store or a, a, a feed store and go ask them what you can do and do it that way. Um, and also Niger seed and getting really good oils, seeds with oil in them over the winter is a, is a good, I think like, you know, the black seeds, sunflower seeds, those kind of things are really good for them. And you can even get like, um, you can make, this is the coolest thing you could do with kids. And it was the peanut butter that got me started on this. Uh, now I want peanut butter cookies. Ooh. Why not? Uh, I'm just saying peanut although, butter cookies. Although this time of year, I'm more than gingerbread, but that's just me. Hey, I'm, 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 I really, really love peanut butter and peanut butter and ginger snaps go together. Yeah. That sounds yeah. pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you go, you get the kids together and you guys can make, like really cool things to hang in the yard with using lard or even peanut butter, like take a bagel and wrap it around it kind of thing. You can get wire cages, but you can make holiday ornaments in your yard that are covered in bird seed that you can do as projects. The best place to go for all of what I'm talking about, go to, um, you know, the National Wildlife Federation has a place where you can go online and certify yourself to become a uh, certified uh, backyard habitat for wildlife. You oh, garden cool. for wildlife. It means that you have provided shelter, that you've provided water, that you don't spray a bunch of insecticides and, and nasty weed killers kind of stuff in your garden. So we want them to have a chemical free zone and um, that you have the right plants, native plants and things that actually feed these uh, wonderful critters. And there's a whole movement to get kids to create a, a you know, a backyard. Like a, there's one um, about creating your own national park in your backyard. So kids get involved and then they can watch the wildlife. You know, last, um, last, I was going to say in spring this year, early spring, Nancy and I were in Wisconsin in Minocqua and it snowed big time, right? But they had this feeder that I would go out and basically slide on my butt through ice to get to. Um, so I was in a I lot of you pain. Look for excuse for that, yeah. Well, yeah, no, you, I, you know, I did. I, I had an excuse. To, well, I did hurt myself come, going down, like no matter what. And dogs would pee there too, and I'd end up in that too. <laughs> but Nancy and the dogs and the cats would sit and watch me do this from the window because the squirrels would be eating the food. The birds would come, the cardinals, all these birds, and and it'd be, you know we were sitting there watching snow and watching animals eat, you know. 
and knowing that my sliding and falling on my butt was good. And whenever I came back in from doing that, because I get so cold, Nancy made me a hot toddy. So I did a lot of bird feeding. I'm just saying, you know, I'm <laughs> you just know, saying. You know, it's you, a know, good thing. you know, Nancy and the dog sounds like a band name. I think you should patent it. I, I like that. Nancy and the dog. Nancy and the dog. What kind of music would they would they play? I think you know, punk I, rock. Why did I just, I kind of went right to Rubber Soul album. Yeah. I wanted to say Nancy and the Rubber Dogs. I don't know why. <laughs> and I just went to Rubber Soul. It's because you got the Beatles thing stuck in my head well, now. I think, and I think, I think it would now, be Nan- like Nancy, that. Nancy and the Rubber Dogs sounds like she might be institutionalized. So I'm not sure she'd care for that uh, moniker. Yeah, well, you never know. I, this is what happens when she's putting out a magazine and we're recording. You know what I mean? We put her to work and we get to be silly. I feel I bad it. for her. I'm going to have to make her a toddy no, now. That's what's going to happen. She loves it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ooh. well, you do that. Okay, let's, <laughs> let, let's get to let, we're, we're totally off topic already. I love this, though. You know, yeah, it's for yeah. the birds. Feed the birds and get get those. Um, you can get those bricks um, that have worms in them too, and that's cool for kids Weird. to put out and play with. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So, um, but anyway, just it's that time of year that we should watch out for our our loved ones um, outside, even if you have a patio, um, create a little oasis for them. All right, so um, let's look at today. Uh, let, well, let's go on the twenty seventh, which is Monday, so it is Cyber Monday. Uh, so you yeah. can shop online, and that's really cool. I just ask people, buy music. How about that, Joey? What do you think? Buy music oh, yeah. online. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I'm all about it. You know, this year, um, I have to confess, though, I, I did all my Christmas shopping in the U.K. and Italy. Um, so because so I was on tour, um, and, um, and, and so I went to Venice and bought some stuff. And so I did, I did some more unique gifts, um, this, uh, this year, but I, I do love it if you buy, um, you know, music, um, from, from your favorite artists, because, you know, a lot of people think that artists are set up, you know, and making lots of money. And, and the fact is that's not necessarily true. And, you know, we as human beings, oftentimes, take the path of least resistance. Like it's easy for us just to stream music on our phone or our favorite smart device. And there's nothing wrong with that. But um, if you really want to support an artist that you love so they can keep making the art that speaks to you, the best thing you can do is buy that CD, buy that vinyl, um, because that's a lot more money goes to the artist that way than it does Mm. through streaming. Streaming royalties are very low. Um, They're not even as high as terrestrial AM FM radio. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's my, it, my short. Soapbox. Try and get vinyl, try and get albums, you know, the CD. Yeah, the vinyl's vinyl. fun. I, mm-hmm. I never, as a kid, I didn't like vinyl that much because as a blind person trying to get the needle down, uh, yeah. on, on the, on, on a specific, not, not at the beginning of the record, but on a specific song that was very, very, well, basically it was impossible. Uh, and, and so I scratched up a lot of records that way. But, um, if you, I, listening to vinyl from start to finish, it's real easy for me as a blind person. And really, you know, that's kind of how I prefer to listen when I have something that's special to me. Then mm-hmm. I like to just sit down and for 45 minutes or an hour, not do anything else, but listen intently to that record, be taken to a new place. So vinyl is a great way to do that and enjoy the holidays too. And, you know, now that, you know, vinyl is coming back, which I'm a huge fan of, you know, it's yeah. coming back and, and the, you know, people do it in different colors and stuff like that. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Cool awesome. too. Yeah. There's a lot all of kinds like of ways. That. Yeah. You know, um, if you thing... like Prince, there, Prince uh, has an online store um, and uh, they do all kinds of cool different colors and limited edition vinyls. And there's, they have a really nice selection if you like, you know, if you like Prince. And here's the thing too: go to a record store. I mean, you know, you can go online too, like, you know, but sure. Well, for like Amoeba sure, Records. But... Yeah. If you can go to a record store, like in Asheville, North Carolina, in on like a, in the downtown there's a record store on either side of this one street. And I'm like, this is like, and I think there's even a bookshop. I'm like, Oh my God, this is so amazing. But if you, you know, if you have to do digital stuff, fine. But if you can get, and, and a lot of times you're going to get vinyl that's used. Don't worry about giving used vinyl because if someone really loves a specific band and they get that, you know, it's a, it's like finding an antique book of your favorite author. It is a special, special thing. Hopefully Absolutely. it won't be too scratched up, but I would say yeah, yeah. don't, don't stretch. And even CDs, even if it's used, because now they're kind of going like what vinyl was, right? Yeah. So yeah. 
So don't don't stress. You know, think about your 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 person you're giving to. Make sure they have a CD player or buy a record player. Like, yeah, you just do the whole thing. Why don't you just is, get that, the record that's player? A cool gift. That's a cool gift. Like, yeah. And and I would like one for my car. Like, you know, I'm just saying. A record know. player for your car? Yeah, I think they should start making them. I want one. Well, the the problem is that they would they would skip a lot anytime there's a problem. I know. I know. <laughs> now, I know. There have been. I don't know if they still make these, but at one time. Uh, they were not cheap, but at one time they were making uh, record players, or I guess we should say turntables to be technical, um, turntables that were that read the record with a laser, and that might be a hmm. little more stable. I'm not sure. Uh, I never bought one because it, it was astronomical how much they wanted for one. So I was like, and I didn't have enough vinyl in my collection. I was like, ah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah, that might be yes. a possibility. Or you could just build a gimbal in your car that would hold the record player perfectly steady no matter what happened. No, not when we go on these roads that we go on. You know, we do parks and stuff. We're on bouncing yeah, around, yeah, yeah. you know. But listen, it's pins and needles day today, too. Speaking of that, so now, what, is my that, mind, what does that mean? Um, it is about put a pin on your calendar. <laughs> no, that's what it says on this website. Pin, well, now it reminds me of the song Needles and Pins. Remember that? Um, I, I don't well, know that one, but I, pins and needles to me typically is a bad pins. thing. Yeah, it's, like when it's I have to do my arms asleep or something. I don't hey, know. this is from a musical. I didn't know this. Um, it celebrates a popular musical performed on Broadway. And by the way, this is on nationaltoday.com. So I'm going to give them a shout out since I'm reading it. Yeah. Um, uh, performed on Broadway between 1937 and 1940. It was composed by Harold Rome. And it was originally written for the members of the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. Interesting. Ooh. Okay. But now it, I understand the reference. Yeah. I get it. it. I get it. Oh, so that's pretty cool. So, um, they you know what that makes me think it. of? Is, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Ooh. No, I was going to say this. Uh, the show was based on the lives of young workers during the American labor movement and acted as a parody of prevalent social issues. It was performed 1,018 times and was even presented to President Franklin D. Roosevelt and his wife at the White House in 1938. I think that's How pretty cool. cool. Very interesting. That makes, when you think of, when you talk about, you know, uh, pins and needles and sewing. It always makes me think of that great British comedy called The Rag Trade, which was uh, about these ladies that were sewing garments so they could be sold to um, posh uh, stores in, in London. And it's a, it's a great comedy. If you haven't seen it, uh, it's kind of hard to find, but I do actually have the DVD in my collection. Hey, that is very cool. I You know, who knew we were going to get into this today, right? I know. Um, also, it is Turtle Adoption Day today, and Love this is turtles. a big deal because people used to go buy turtles out of pet stores, which you shouldn't be doing. And these things can live, like African tortoise could live to like 80, 90 years old, you know? Yeah. Um, but you can adopt them and um, help them. And I have friends who adopt desert uh, tortoises, and I know this is a turtle day, though. They like water. Turtles are the water ones. Um, but there's tortoises too, um, because people, if they touch them in the desert, then they ended up having to be homed because once you touch one in the desert, you've messed them up. What so do you, don't what, play how, with explain, them. Explain, how, how does that, how does that, what, what happens when you touch them? What does that, what does it yeah, mean? They're just, they get all, they, it, it just means that you've now, because they go by scent and things like that, you've now ruined whatever their, their thing is, their pathway. You're not supposed to touch them. So there, yeah. a lot of them are rehomed and because also crows eat the eggs and stuff there's all kinds of crazy things that happen but basically well, you know, it's about having habitat for them and the, the, not messing turtles. with them but i love turtles, turtles. Like, i i collect i collect little uh stuffed turtles and little glass turtles and little you know figurine turtles and um there's just some, something about them that i find so i don't know comforting and majestic they're i love them and we were they really are neat and we were um on our honeymoon and we went to Grand Cayman where they have a turtle farm. And, um, this lady, uh, they were swimming around, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and of course I couldn't see them, uh, or hear them. And I just sort of commented to my wife. I said, uh, I said, I wonder, I said, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame that I can't really perceive these turtles. I wonder if they have, uh, you know, the ability to have it, you know, a petting thing where you can touch the turtle. And uh, she said, well, I don't see that anywhere. And this lady walked up and, and took a turtle out of this pond. And like, she goes, here you go. Check this out. And I was like, oh, ma'am, how long have you been working here? She's like, oh, I don't work here. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I had no idea. 
that I wasn't supposed to touch that turtle. And, and, and it was just, I mean, I was just talking to my wife, like not talking to anybody else. Wasn't saying it particularly loud. And this crazy lady like handed me a turtle. Anyway, that's my turtle story. Wow. Hey, you never know, right? Yeah. Um, anyway. No, but now I met a turtle. I mean, I've seen lots of turtles in swamps throughout the the east. See, you're braver than me. I, I am not a swamp kind of guy. I just I'm a swamp swampy girl. That sounds really no. bad. That sounds yeah, bad. I, I think I read that about you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, I'm I'm going to watch my mouth. I really am. Please do. Um, I am. Um, but a turtle. I actually met a turtles. Uh, a turtle. Uh, the drummer from the band, the turtles, um, oh, he, was, cool. he was in there once and I can't remember his name for the life of me, but he had a shop in Carlsbad, California, where he sold blinds. But, um, yeah. Um, and the turtles, we're going to have to put them on the music playlist and absolutely, everyone, um, absolutely. that's Great a big deal. So look at the show notes, uh, wherever you're listening, whether it's on YouTube or Spotify or Google, wherever, um, are there you are the, links. What are the classic happy together? Yes, happy to get, that's a good one to do for this time of year. Happy to get yes. it. Yeah. Um, we have a music playlist. You can listen on Spotify or YouTube. So you can find the links there. And we also put a link to a page on our site, blendradioandtv.com, where we list the holidays and quotes and all kinds of stuff. Who was born on this day? We put recipe links, articles, and podcasts that relate to things. So we'll have to do something about turtles. Um, but I don't know if we will, but there, but it's all there. And of course, you'll also be able to link through to, to connect more with Joey. And you can go to joeystucky.com. And that last name, Stucky is a prominent name to think about when it's the holiday season and we want to eat all kinds of good things and naughty things and shop for sweet treats wouldn't you say Stuckies? absolutely yeah absolutely my, my cousin stephanie is working hard to bring stuckies back a lot of people that have done road trips you know especially in the 80s uh will remember the stuckies one of the things they were famous for was uh cleanest restrooms on the on the interstate and then of course uh, the pecan log, which is the big, the big thing. They also had a goo goo cluster and some other stuff too. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's Christmas time and, um, there are a lot of really cool Stuckies oriented gifts you can get. In fact, I just got an email from my cousin, um, uh, saying, you know, it's that time of year to send out, uh, corporate gifts and things like that for your friends and your colleagues and people that are important to your business. And she has a whole bunch of cool, uh, stucky stuff. Uh, fortunately, I get a family discount. I'm not going to share how much, but anyway, it's, it's significant. <laughs> well, uh, hey, I think any kind of discount is good, you know, so yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm all for it. Now, listen, have you had a Bavarian cream pie? Because today is National Bavarian Cream Pie Day. I have not, but now I want to. Mm -hmm. It looks good. Um, yeah. Now, what about it's Lancashire Day? Now, listen, on November 27th, Lancashire Day, um, I used to live out that area, and um, Lancashire has changed over the years. I remember Lancashire hot pot, and that sounds good around nuts, like oh, a stew delicious. with dumplings. So You've good. had it? Yep, Lancashire yeah. hot pot? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. And Lancashire, talk about music history, right? Lancashire yeah. big on music. So, um, yeah, hello. hello. And football. Let's not forget football. Glorious football. <laughs> That's um, right. So, uh, Here's the other thing, November 28th, we're moving on to Giving Tuesday, and, and this is when you think about nonprofits. Joey, do you have nonprofits that you recommend? Because we all know that there are some ones out there that you may think are great, and then you go, oopsie, I wish I didn't donate or volunteer. Remember, uh, Giving Tuesday is not always about cash. Sometimes it's volunteering or even yeah. just sharing your love for a nonprofit to encourage others. There's, you, know, you can do all kinds of fundraisers on Facebook and all kinds of things. So um, we can all get involved for causes that we care deeply about. Do you have any uh, charities that you recommend people look into? Well, for me personally, um, we, do, we do two things uh, around the holidays in my, in my family. My family... Uh, meaning my wife and I and my mom and dad. And um, so uh, we all donate to St. Jude's um, because uh, it's amazing what they, what they do for sick kids. And uh, having been a very sick child, uh, I know how important that is. We also like to give to the Ronald McDonald house uh, because uh, when a family's sick and they're trying to stay long-term care with their child, you really shouldn't, um, leave a loved one in the hospital by themselves if you can help it. Uh, so, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's just a, it's just a bad idea. Someone that, you know, needs to be there to help advocate for the patient. Uh, and then we also uh, very quietly um, go to 
are, this is something you can do. It's not technically part of Giving Tuesday as far as a nonprofit, um, but what we do during the holidays at this time is we uh, have my wife having, uh, you know, been, uh, she's retired now, but she was a, a nurse midwife. So she has an advanced practice nurse, uh, having a master's degree in nursing, and then also a lot of other certifications, midwifery, and she was a surgical assist and all this stuff. And um, she will reach out to uh, the charge nurse at uh, the hospital that where she used to do most of her, her uh, work and see if there are any nurses in the hospital that are having a difficult year um, financially due to illness or whatever. And then we will uh, give them quietly a donation and, and make it anonymous and, uh, wow. and just and just give to that those people because you know we, we think about the, the sick children and we and, and we should uh, and I'm I'm all about that with St. Jude's but you know sometimes the care providers also yeah. have have tragedies and they have a really difficult job being mm-hmm. being a nurse or a doctor or a, you know I mean that's those are very difficult stressful hard jobs and you know some people in the medical business make a lot of money. Uh, but a lot of people that that keep the medical business afloat really don't make that much, and uh, so they can, you know, they can oftentimes, you know, have have uh, really hard times during that during that time of year. Um, so we always think about those nurses and 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 uh, ancillary staff, you know, that the medical receptionists and the, you know, all the different the people, janitors, that, that, yeah, and the Holy transport, cow. yeah. So yeah. we always go and find the charge nurse that knows you know, all the ins and outs of, of, of what's going on with all the different people that work in that, in that, uh, and we, we, we always uh, give to labor and delivery. Um, not, not that we, you should necessarily single out a specific section, but, but my wife, you know, that's, she knows everybody there and um, she can get, you know, talk to somebody about who needs, who needs help. And um, I like I said, so labor and delivery, uh, the NICU, which is a critical care ICU for newborns, um, and, and we also, um, sometimes we, we always think about the nurses, but we also, every once in a while, there might be a patient that really needs help. Um, and, mm. and, you know, so we, we also do that. So, yeah, I mean, there's all kind of great ways to give. I think giving, giving Tuesday is a fantastic thing to help remind us to take a moment out of our crazy lives and, uh, come up for air for a second. And remember that if we have the ability to bless somebody else, um, that's an awesome thing to do. I agree. I agree. And it, it's, you know, sometimes, like I was saying, it's volunteering. Maybe it is going and yeah. shoveling the snow for your neighbor who's elderly or something, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, they, they buy well, someone was, coffee or even, you know. Yeah. And, you know, um, um, one of the things that you can do, I don't know how many people know about this, but uh, the, the babies in the nursery, um, if they are being put up for adoption or if their parents, you know, have to are sick, or if their parents are having to work crazy schedules, um, babies really need to be hugged and rocked and touched. It's really important um, to their sense of well-being. And you can volunteer to come rock uh, babies and hold babies and just mm. give them that human contact that they need to be healthy. So uh, you can definitely volunteer at your local hospital to go and rock babies. And we do that sometimes. That's awesome. I, I love yeah. it because today is National Day of Giving. You know, it's Giving yeah. Tuesday and it's, it's different ways. Um, Nancy and I do a lot of um, just we do a lot of PR stuff for nonprofits all the time yeah. Yeah. And above and beyond. And we just kind of really go that way because we know the effect well, that's, that's, it has. That's one of your special skills. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there was a, a long time. It was a, a there was a musician that um, has been on our show a lot over the years and um you know because i get very passionate about what happens in nancy too about wildlife and nature the land and uh people you know especially our indigenous people that you know we've got to take care of and i mean also you know nancy did her art tour in south africa for the cancer association you know raising money for them and um we've just uh, i think our whole life has been this about this and it feels better, you know, um, but we do a lot in regards to the parks and, and what this one musician, we were doing things about Monsanto. This is a great conversation to have when we're all you know, eating harvested food, right? 
Yeah. And um, we were doing things about what was happening. Um, I did things on people that were disabled from um, Agent Orange because there still are. And it actually goes in through like the mom will be fine. But the husband was in Vietnam, for example, got Agent Orange and they were kind of okay or something would change with him. But if he got she got pregnant, this is one lady, for an example, and it's a true story. And she's since passed Rena Kapolinski. Uh Anyway, her son ended up being born disabled and autistic and all kinds of issues. And so it passes through and then his kid, right? So it's not just him immediately. It just goes through every other generation, moves down um, this Agent Orange. Um, it's, a, it's a crippling chemical, really. And um, if you live by train tracks and you live by those kind of things where chemicals have been transported, you're also in harm's way. So anyway, we've done, we did this whole thing on what was going on in Hawaii in regards to Monsanto, which was right outside the schools where kids were playing. We did, oh boy, we, anyway, we got ourselves into a lot of trouble, um, cause we opened our mouths. And I think sometimes you, when you see a good fight, get in it. There's a famous quote and, and it's a true thing sometimes to stand up, but, then I started seeing all these other effects of what was going on with how water was polluted and like certain seals were getting killed over here. Soil tables were affecting the farmers. And once you start getting into this, I started going a little bit off the rails. Like, you know, what am I, go- I, I can't fix it all, but you know, and um, I was like, well, should I be mobilizing people here? Should I be doing, and he, he, he just, he said, you cannot, get too upset about all of it all the time. It's not, it's good that you care, obviously, but trying to do stuff that other people are born to do, you need to do what you're born to do. And and the longer you've got to be the person beating the drum and doing what you do with your shows, your podcasts, your magazines, articles, all that, because that's actually the hardest thing sometimes for issues to get. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, And because I was ready to just like all of a sudden I went down a giant rabbit hole of what was going on with chemicals in our land and our water and how it was affecting the health of people and kids, especially. And so I went, I went a little nutty until someone, you know, gave me a very good, thank you, Makana, (laughs) gave me a good lesson about calming down and using what you really have to help. So that's to me, when you think about Giving Tuesday, sometimes look at what you do and how that can help someone and uh, something that you're passionate about. Like, what, it, like, you know, you're talking about Jennifer, your wife, who is, you know, she's a midwife and you guys, you know, go in, in the places that you understand and know. So, you know, it's yeah. effective. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Did and that I, make sense? I, I kind of rambled on because I do get upset about all well, that I mean, stuff. I think- I think giving, you know, to there's a lot of organizations out there that are are wonderful, um, and 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 there's nothing wrong with giving to those. You know, the only thing that, the, and, I mean, you know, I guess one could say, well, how do I know the money's going where I think it should, and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, you can't micromanage that stuff. You just have to kind of do what you think is right. But it it is a concern, and and I think a reasonable question to ask uh, with a, with a nonprofit, you know, so you have to do a little homework. Um, you know, how much of this cost, how much of this money that I'm giving you is going to administrative expenses? How, you know, where, how is my money being used? I think those are all fair questions to ask, but, uh, you know, at some point you have to decide. I mean, like I said, St. Jude's just speaks to my heart. And, uh, and so I just, I give, I give, I give there because I think it's good, but I do like, and they're, they're kind of like a big, you know, corp, a, a big organization. Um, but I do like going where we know we can be effective. Uh, mm-hmm. And we know that we know the people and we know how to talk to the people. And, you know, giving is a, it's an important thing to do. I mean, I feel, I feel like if I have an ability to help someone, then, you know, it's incumbent upon me as a caring being uh, to do that with the caveat that the person takes my gift and uses it to better themselves. Um, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's, it's not, you know, you shouldn't just give and give and give and, the, and, and the gift is not being received. Um, I've tried to help several different places and organizations that, you know, I gave a lot of time. I gave a lot of money. I gave a lot of volunteer work and, you know, um, it, it wasn't, it wasn't valued the way it should have been. So I stopped 
and yeah. moved on to somewhere else where I felt valued. And, and that's the important thing to think yeah. about as well. Like, you know, you want to make sure, like I, I've given to several organizations that wanted free studio time. And I was glad to do that to try and help them out. But then when it came time to use the gift I was giving, which is money out of my pocket, um, which I was glad to do, but they came in without being prepared, without being ready to make the most of my gift. And so it, it was really, um, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't thrilled. <laughs> it's about relationships. You know what? I think yeah, giving yeah. is about relationships. And when you give, you have to let go of it too. Like your Absolutely. money, you kind of like, well, that's the thing. I mean, you have to, you have to yeah. think, well, I'm, this is what my heart says to do, and I can't micromanage. Yeah. That was actually kind of my bigger point was that you know you can't micromanage the gift. You have to just give it and and be okay with it, just you know doing what it's going to do. Either way, but um, you don't have to repeat yeah. if it doesn't. Exactly. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. I do want to say this about admin. You know, you do need admin. You know, a nonprofit is a business. It is yeah. just it does has a tax benefit, and they're a good a, a do good kind of entity and yeah. um so it's you know it's still something good and there's a lot of companies too like if you're seeing companies that are doing something like hey we're cutting back on our plastic or we're doing some certain things you know support them over something on amazon <laughs> did i say that um no, you know what i mean I so <clears throat> look at who you're also supporting in business like for gifts and things like music like we were saying earlier was is such a good thing but um, and I love supporting I, I, companies. Yeah, I love supporting companies that are doing important things and who have picked the cause. And it makes me feel yeah. great about giving my money to them. Like, you know, if, it, I, I like yeah. this, if, I, if I'm going to buy, uh, you know, I, I won't name names, but if I'm going to buy a microphone and spend several thousand dollars on, on, a, on a tool, it's nice to know that, hey, oh, these guys are doing, not only are they making money for themselves, but they're also doing important work. Well, that's one of the reasons I like working yeah. with Mojave Audio. Uh, their, mm -hmm. their products are amazing, but, but, uh, as important, they, they support a lot of really cool causes and they were a sponsor for Joey Stucky Alive Day, but they, you know, th that's not the reason that I'm saying this. It's, it's, it's because they, they do a lot of cool things and they try to support the arts in their community and they do a lot of really cool things helping people out. So. That and that that's the thing, especially look and see what are they doing in their community, you know, exactly. um, you know, so, and then, um, I want to talk about you, you were, um, you have a video and it was an MAD microphone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who is this that you were, is that's, that that's through Mojave. the Mojave or my, yeah, that's Mojave. Yeah. yeah. You performed whipping post. I used to, I used to cover that and play it, but like, I can't play it. Like you like what you do. I was like watching this going, Holy cow. Look what he's doing. He's like, totally like jazzed it out. And yeah, I love your rendition of it. And, and whipping post is I loved it. I loved it because everyone's so used to that. Dun, 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 like the whole, you know, Almond Brothers sound. And you, it, I, I love it when someone takes a song and totally makes it their own. And, and I loved that. And I loved the sound. You know what they have with that mic? And, and you obviously know sound really well, right? But there's a crispness to it and a warmth at the same time. I've been meaning to tell you about this for months. Um, there, there's this crisp and warmth, and that's a very hard thing to get in a mic where it's not, um, yeah, it just the balance and the sound was just, it's spot on, man. I, I, I love that you know, there's that warmth. Well, let me, I'm so excited you said that because I, I want to tell you, um, so Mojave Audio, um, this is the first dynamic microphone. I won't go into uh, uber rabbit holes about what dynamic is versus condenser versus ribbon, blah, blah. But anyway, uh, it's their first dynamic microphone. Uh, the price point for this microphone is $160, which is incredible um, for what you get. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing. I have six of them. And, um, and they are, you know, primarily uh, used for vocals, but... Um, I have used them on guitar cabinets. Mm -hmm. I've used them on snare drums. I've used them on kick drums. They're not the best kick. I'll, I'll admit they're not the best kick drum mic in the world. They're not bad. Um, but there are other mics that are a little bit better. But but uh, but they are. The, the thing about these is these microphones are designed by a, a legend in our business named David Royer. And David Royer is has two microphone companies that he's affiliated with. One's called Royer Microphones. And they make strictly ribbon microphones. And then Mojave Audio makes uh, condensers and now their first dynamic. 
and uh, and and he is an absolute genius. I mean, he is. If, if he knows everything about microphones, and if you if he doesn't know it, you don't need to know it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's one of the greatest privileges of my career to literally go and have lunch with him and just sit down and talk about. I mean, he's an absolute genius. He 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 builds. He makes all these microphones. Um, he's, he's incredible. And he, uh, he, he's just, you know, he's, he's just an amazing guy. Um, you know, he has autism and, um, and for him to be, I'm so proud uh, of him because he is out there at the top of our industry doing such incredible, important work. And he's a fantastic human being. He's just such a wonderful person. But he just, I mean, he, he, microphones are like, I don't know. He's, he's at a whole different level is all I can say. He, he just, he is like the microphone God. <laughs> I mean, well, that's the, you know, but that's, that's the thing. It, it goes back to like what we're talking about with McConaughey It's like, do what you do best. Do, you know, focus on, on your energy because then you're also, you're focusing and you're going to get better and better and better. Right. And yeah. it goes back to the giving. It's like, it, it, quality of workmanship comes from all those hours you know it's like when people say well you know oh you're you musicians you know oh they're charging too much and i go um they're charging you for all the years they have practiced to be at this level yes, you know how much practice, sweat and how, yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. yeah so i mean it's, it's when you look at costs like when people start on about cost of wine i'm going do you know how much a winemaker invests into their crops and then hopes oh to gosh. help Mother it's, Nature doesn't take them out, you know. It's like yeah, farmers yeah. and stuff, that's you know. A, that's a that's a very difficult man. That 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 is that is a business that my nature would not allow me to have. A no, no, and the patience you have to wait I, for. I, yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> dude, the waiting of that is like it's massive. Like you have to wait a few years for your wine to be done. Yeah. I don't think I'm. I'm not. No, I'm not good. But I want to go into food. It's yeah, National yeah. French Toast Day on November twenty eighth. Hell yeah. And We've got links up on our site. We've done so much. Uh, you know, we, we, Nancy and I during COVID did, uh, did travel to over 30 bed and breakfasts. Um, and we have a lot of recipes and more in production. And so we've got a lot of French toast. It is something very easy to do over the holidays because you can even make it overnight if you have family coming and you whip it out and you put it in the oven. We have recipes like that. Oh man, it is good. Do you, and you put berries with, and all kinds. Do you do it with mm-hmm. powdered sugar or do you not? At the end, yeah, you can. Uh huh. But, but yep. how do you do it? Me, I don't. You see, I'm weird. Okay. Well, I know. So I am weird. <laughs> I am. I am. Um, a little bit on the. I should. I should actually do this and put the recipe together on the site. Um, um. But anyway, if other people do. You no, they normally don't put sugar in the egg. That's kind of a. From what I've seen, very few do that. Um, right. the the powdered sugar goes on at the end on top like as a garnish so not in it like now i do a very weird um savory french toast so i will saute onion garlic uh, mushrooms with some uh, olives in there too and maybe some bell peppers or something just a little bit um you can use all kinds of herbs like basil and oregano like fresh basil is really good so this is what I do. I am weird, and I I like texture. So I don't like the big soggy bread thing. Like yeah, even yeah. bread pudding, I'm not that great at. So I toast my bread. I whip my eggs, and I have all my little things that have been sautéed and done right. So then this is what I do. I take a frying pan. I put the two pieces of bread down. And then I put on top like a little bit of egg, pour some egg, and then I put the little ingredients. So it's like a pizza with bread, really. This mm. is really what I'm doing. You put cheese, right? And then you flip it over and you could serve it with avocado. You could put a little bit more cheese. You could put a little salsa on it. So I am a savory and I've put salsa inside the tomato thing. I mean, the, so, the egg batter. I no, want no, savory. That, is it still French toast to do that? I have no clue, but that's what I do. And I've also done it where I cut it up. So it's almost like croutons. So like you would have little pieces. It is like a whole Lisa thing of weirdness because I'm weird. 
And I just go, I, well, what if instead of I everybody think, else doing that pretty, everybody else, these beautiful French toast with berries and yeah. everything. And, and that's delicious too, by the way, I love a good French toast. Nancy loves French toast, but this well, to me think, is a little savory and different. To make sure that it still stays French toast. I think maybe you should like cut it out the shape of the Eiffel tower or something. No, oh, good luck on that. <laughs> hey, we're getting to National Cookie Cutter Day, too. So um, I think oh, there's a cookie apropos. cutter week. Um, let's move on a little bit on this. So we're going in November 29th. There is National Lemon Cream Pie Day. So we've got pies happening. We see that um, yep. going on, which is a good thing. There's a Electronic Greetings Day. Um, I think we're all okay. doing that quite well. There is November 29th is Throw Out Your Leftovers Day. Sometimes we need to remember to get rid of it or freeze it. Like if you took yeah. your turkey, you made a good broth, um, and I have that recipe up on blendradiontv.com. Uh, Chef Jeremy Manley has uh, turkey broth and all kinds of things you can do. So you can utilize it and freeze it and even use it later as stock and things like that. So um, you don't want to eat old turkey and stuff. Like don't, don't do that. Um, November 29th is Square Dancing Day. And so yeah. there you go. Get I dancing mean, in a square. Yeah, don't why be a square? What's not to, what's get not to love? It's, you know, it's hip to be square. It, oh, now we're going to have to put that in there. The <laughs> music playlist. Okay, hip to be square has to go in there. Yeah. Okay. Now, you said that we can start playing Christmas music, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, traditionally, um, Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving is when the, or sometimes Thanksgiving Day, is when the Christmas music season starts for uh, radio and, and places like that. Um, and also, um, you know, a lot of the Christmas movies start coming out and stuff like that. So I love Christmas music. I've, I've produced uh, an awful lot of Christmas albums. I, it's, it's amazing to think about how many Christmas records I've done. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I love them. I love it. And, and you know, um, sometimes it's, it's rehashes of, uh, or I should say reinterpretations would probably be a better way to say that, uh, reinterpretations of classics. Um, many of the, of the Christmas songs we love are public domain. Many of their copyrights expire. Um, and, and then, of course, uh, you know, people that do original Christmas music is always kind of fun, too. So, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Christmas music. It's If you're an artist, uh, whether you're a musical artist or an author or a painter or a sculptor or whatever, you know, the Christmas, the holidays with Christmas never never gets old and, and there's a there's a real clamor for christmas themed art um and uh the great thing about it as a musician is that you know yeah it only only uh plays six weeks out of the year but every year you're going to get a real bump in sales and a real bump in radio and a real bump in christmas music mm -hmm. and the cool thing about christmas music is it doesn't matter if it's brand new or if you had it, if you made it 20 years ago, it just doesn't matter. It, it's always in fashion for those six weeks and, and pretty easy to get airplay with and, and to get support for. So uh, I, I definitely encourage all my friends that are in the arts to do some Christmas you know, products. I think it's smart. I mean, come on. And I think it, you can, you can cover songs like you've got a great jingle bells, um, you know, so there yeah. you can cover them or write your own, you know, I, yeah, I love I, winter I, I, songs. I've got I've got one Christmas song that I have written, uh, and it's called "A Santa That Plays Guitar," and it's all about my Christmas wish to have Santa come jam with me in the band. And uh, it's it's a pretty I have to say it's one of my <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's one of my most popular songs. And I wrote it uh, one night, and my manager at the time was saying, "Hey, do you have some Christmas music?" Because uh, I've got some opportunities for Christmas music. I well, no, but I do own a recording studio, uh, so I can whip up some pretty fast. And this was back in. By the way, if you're if you're going to release Christmas music, you should start working on it in June, um, so that you have everything wow. done and plenty of time for the release. Uh, and so, anyway, um, this was June or something, and I was working on it. And I wrote it one night. And I was like, "Oh, this is great. I love this. This is a great song." And I recorded it on my iPhone, just on the. There's a voice note function and i just recorded it you know i take a lot of notes that way as a blind person and uh and then uh i got downtown and i went to play it so i could start putting the song together and typing out the lyrics and all this stuff and i erased it and so i had to sit there in that moment 
because I had the studio, you know, locked in to do it and rewrite the thing. And honestly, it was oh, better the second time around. <laughs> No, that's good. I, you yeah. know what? I, I lost, I lost a whole bunch of writing that I did out in the desert because our car blew up. Nice. No, that sucked. It was a New Year's I Day. Mean, uh, we I did mean, a gig I mean, you're, 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 you know, you could turn that into a thriller novel. Your car blew up. But it's like crazy. The no, we went, yeah. I think it was the, was it, was it the same? I don't know if it was the Y2K one or was it the year after Y2K? What, one of those years. And our band did a gig out in the desert at a horse camp and we did it every New Year's. Um, and it was a little, well, horse people get a little rowdy, I'm just saying. And yeah. so we were the band and, and so, you know, we were out in the desert and stuff and I'd been writing some stuff and I was just in that headspace of just, you know, when some, suddenly it just starts flowing, you know? Sure. And I wrote all the like crazy stuff and, and some of it had made brownies, so I don't know if I had that as an influence. <laughs> I don't know. But the brownies were good. Either way, I'm not saying anything. It was just good. And we drove back, and um, I parked. You know, we we just pretty much moved to California, and we just started the magazine and everything. I parked. We were in these apartments, and we went upstairs real quick because I wanted to take a quick shower and then take the bass player home. And the bass player had – um he had a brand new bass and amp in the car, Carvin, Carvin stuff. Yeah. And um, it was in the car and I was just going to take a quick shower and then we were going to go. And we heard all these explosions and we're like, what the heck is that, man? And we, at that time we were at war with Baghdad and we're like, we are an ocean, like in Vista, you know, which is in North San Diego. And we could hear explosions always going off behind us at Camp Pendleton, which is a huge Marine base. And we're like, uh oh, like what the heck is going on? Like we instantly thought, are we getting bombed? You know, and it turned out some lady had driven in, parked in her carport, and her uh, gas tank caught on fire, and popped, and caught the entire car. All the cars blew up. You could oh, hear tires God. blow, the fire, like the tanks, everything. Our storage unit burned. Oh, um, God. everything burned. Nancy's car, the, the butt melted a bit. Mine just, the whole thing was gone. And so did Matt. Matt's base was gone. His brand, I mean, he just, this was his dream base. And Carvin, you know, they, they were headquartered in San Diego. I didn't and, know that. um, yeah, they were really good. And, um, yeah, it was a, it was a traumatic thing. And, and so we, we went and Matt and I ran around to all the apartments and getting people out. And, um, and especially the elders and we went out to the street cause I mean, everything, you didn't know if it was going to catch the apartment complex on fire. And the people across the street had all these chairs out and we thought, Oh, how sweet of you. No, it was for them to sit and watch. Oh my how God. About that? Yeah. So his sister took us in and we went to, her, they all lived in Oceanside on the beach and the apartments there. So we all went there and st- spent the night and, and, um, yeah. And there went all my notes. There went my music. Well, yeah, when his base. So, you know, that was a good start to the the new year. And then the next year, Matt and I got in a car accident. <laughs> and no, we weren't there. Were, we weren't doing any shenanigans or anything like that. But Apparently, we had this cycle. Of, yeah. yeah, we got into this point of like it was three. And then we said, that's enough. Three negative things had happened. And that was that. And um, enough. Yeah. Enough. So that cycle broke. And um, now we can do what we want on New Year's. But it w- none of us had done anything bad. And like the car accident wasn't our fault or anything like that. Um, but we had some, you know, just some things that just, it was just a crazy thing. And you you just, you know, you see the, the bad stuff of people and things like that happen. But majority of it, we saw a lot of people just turn around and help and support. And 10 days later, I broke my arm. So there oh, it was. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, oh. and had a rod put in, went into surgery. Yeah, that was great. A great Jeez. time frame, but yeah, but I still mourn that music. I yeah. I can't. I I well, don't know, have it back. That's you know? the, that's the great thing about. Well, there's there's two things. You know, the by and large, um, you know, while I'm in while I'm writing a new song, uh, I by and large remember the bulk of it, even if my note got lost or whatever. I mean, I, I by and large remembered most of it. Um, I think it improved the second time around. Um, uh, and I really like it. But, but the other thing is what's so wonderful now 
is that, you know, you can upload everything to the cloud. And so, um, you know, yeah. this is, this is, this is now where everything's uploadable to the cloud. So you've got it backed up on several different servers and, and it's kind of nice. Even if, even if it's, I mean, for audio clips, yeah, it's obvious, but you know, you can scan your papers now and, um, all that kind of good jazz. So it's, it's a lot easier to keep those precious moments. Yeah. I mean, of this was over 20 years ago. Yeah. This was yeah. pre Google even, I think, uh, at that oh, point, man. but wow. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was crazy, but. <laughs> I think I think that I did rewrite some of it, like, and yeah. some of it is in the storage unit. Um, yeah, you know, since we travel full time, everyone for those tuning in early, but that's kind of a downer story. But it, but a lot of good came out of things later. So I, I don't. I, it's not a negative story. You know, things happen in life, and it's you just got to keep you know chin up no matter what. And I, I and during the holidays, that's the other thing I, I think is so important. You know, we've gone through Thanksgiving and. A lot of times, you know, people are down during the holidays while we're all cheerful, right? Sure, because sure. Because things happen, you know, yeah. um, sad things happen or we've lost somebody or, you know, yeah. it's the first time without a parent or, you know, there's so many different right. things. So right. remember, everyone's going through something different, you know, um, you know, it's just you remember that you like don't happiness is good, but make sure that you're you're not over happy to people that aren't happy. For a real reason, you know. Yeah. There's kind of a balance. You know what I mean? You don't ho ho somebody that's yeah. just lost somebody. You know yeah. that yeah, that yeah. sounds. Don't go. Don't go hoeing. Uh, you, you knew um, what I was thinking. <laughs> I know. I said that word, but hey, listen. Yeah. So I've I've moved on on some holidays here. There's National Moose Day on uh, November 30th. Now, who doesn't like a good chocolate moose or like uh, you know? Is, is yeah? it that kind of moose or is it a moose with antlers? No, no, it's moose with chocolate. Okay. Or like, I, you know, a dessert mousse. Or not, so you could have, wear it and eat your hair stuff if you want. Well, hair yeah, mousse? Yeah, yeah, hair mousse. Yeah, so I have uh, I have a lovely uh, stuffed mousse um, that's a stuffed animal. And it, it says on his, uh, he's, he's an official smooches mousse. So he's supposed to smooch you when you feel down. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one thing I got when I was in the hospital. And uh, I also have eaten a delicious mousse. At a, uh, a restaurant in um, uh, Dustin, San Dustin Beach, Florida, called mm. Seagars, C spelled S E A, Seagars. And uh, it was a chocolate mousse packed inside of a chocolate baby grand piano. Uh, this Dude. dessert cost me 40 bucks, but it was worth it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is amazing. That is yeah. amazing. So, Nancy and I used to have two, we each had a stuffed mousse. Um, that uh, you could actually stand up, like. Oh wow! That's it, a big was, one. it was no, no. We 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 love moose, right? This is one of my favorite animals. Yeah. So when we got to this country, we had we we had all these stuffed animals, like kind of crazy, like we were a little bit insane. But um, we went on a road trip, and we hadn't had any time off since we got to this country. We'd been working, 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 and we got like a week off and we did this road trip around Florida. We went up uh, to North Carolina, but we went to the Bahamas on a cruise. We were just, just went a little wild and we took our moose and we put them in the back seat with, put their seat belts on like really people. like, <laughs> like a, So there is a time and, and I know we have this. Uh, no, what we did is we were driving. I think we were out by Tallahassee or Jacksonville area. Mm-hmm. And there was a moose lodge, you know, for the moose. <laughs> so we pulled over and we took the moose out and put them at the door at the moose lodge and took a photo of them at the oh, moose I lodge. Love that photo. And and then of course we decided they had to be territorial about it too. So anyhow, so fight over it. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 no. You know, a moose cocked their legs too. I'm just saying. Oh, we decided God. they were a male. Oh. So nice. they needed to mark their territory <laughs> and let everybody know that they were there. And so here are two women out there with their stuffed moose, making them cock legs on the front porch of a moose lodge in the middle of nice. somewhere swampy. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing you haven't been arrested and or deported. Not yet. <laughs> well, You're still trying. I don't. I was like, no, I haven't been arrested, but I, it, it's. I've had moments. That have come close, but nothing, nothing <laughs> yeah. bad, nothing bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. it is also National Mason Jar Day. So listen, this is speaking really of the cool. moose having to cock a leg. Yeah, That's, really, uh, mason yeah. jars can be used for all things, including moonshine. moonshine. Uh, yeah, yep, moonshine. yep, moonshine. Yeah. Um, mason jars. You know, this is the thing too. You can, 
You could put pie in there. I know a lot of friends who make what? salads and keep them in. Yeah, you can make put pie in a mousse. Uh, in a you can drawer? make things. Listen, I'm just thinking for holiday season, right? Oh, yeah. You can cookies? make things. Cookies in a mason jar. You could do yeah. moonshine in a mason jar with some cherries. Jelly. Preserves. Jams, jellies, preserves, salsas. You name it. You could yeah. make all kinds of things and put it in a mason jar and put a bow around it. And a ribbon, that's yeah. a nice homemade gift. Absolutely. Or how about candy? Go get yes. some candy. Stucky's candy. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. Yeah. I want jelly I love, beans. I love jelly beans. You know, I do have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is the Peanut Patch in Yuma, Arizona. Check it out, thepeanutpatch.com. I'm going to play her clip at the end. More than, do they sell more than peanuts? Oh, they have peanuts. They have, because they used to grow there in Yuma, Arizona. Now they have peanuts. They have every nut you can imagine, including me. Um, yeah. I go in there and I can say, I'm one of you. No, they have every, they have gift baskets that they make over the phone. They have a, You can shop online, thepeanutpatch.com, or go there. Um, gift baskets, they have dates, local medjool dates that are grown nice. there. Nice. Uh, really, those are the royal dates. And talk about appetizers, like you can cut them open, stuff them with some cream cheese, peanut butter yeah. we were talking about. They have homemade peanut butter. They do date shakes. They do um, every kind of old-fashioned candy you can imagine. My nice. thing is licorice. Like, I, that they have sugar-free candy. They make homemade fudge, ice cream. They have, like, if you're in, you know, souvenirs for the state of Arizona, they have all of it. Like, even Anasazi beans, which are the Anasazi Native Americans. So they have um, really food that, you know, salsas and things like that from locals. Um, they have jelly beans. They have the jelly bellies, I think is what they're called. All I know yeah. is I eat them. And whenever I go in there, I kind of, the bank account gets drained a little. And it's okay. <laughs> with me yeah. and Nancy because it's good so um check them out so mason jar I would say you could get a mason jar right if you don't know about cooking and stuff and go to a place like that and get jelly beans and make little layered colors of jelly beans and candy what do you think about like just stuffing it with goodness like that I, I mean, love it I love it you, you know do you remember I don't know I mean we're we're uh we're roughly the same age uh you and I and um and do you We're remember? 21. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm celebrating anniversaries of my 21st birthday. Um, so, it's, so, but I mean, do you do you remember in school where they used to have those things like guess how many jelly beans are in this mason jar? Yeah. Did you ever have that happen? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I did. And I always said to them, well, I, I can't see how many jelly beans are in this jar. Uh, you know, I, there's no way for me to see how high it's been stuffed or whatever. Can I feel? The jelly beans in the jar, and they always said no. That would be cheating. Um, but uh, nevertheless, and also uh, the thing that was odd about that game in school, uh, and every year it happened, they, they'd set the jar out in the lunchroom or somewhere in the you know common room you could go by and try to guess. But every year I always wondered what happened to the jelly beans because they never let you eat the jelly beans. Like what happened? Where where did the jelly beans go after people were done guessing teacher, how many teacher, jelly beans were in the jar? Teachers, the teachers lounge. Lounge. yeah, yeah. So anyway, so the teachers' lounge is about. No, they, they did all kinds of stuff like that, and then you know, I, I think it's kind of mean. But I want to tell you, we've moved on to December. We're moving on. We're getting good. December first is National Peppermint Bark Day. I'm in. Peppermint bark. I've never had any. Really, it's like chocolate with peppermint and candy cane crushed up. That sounds pretty mm. good. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. It's uh, dentists will not like it. Mm. Um, you know. Eat you know, a red a of, apple day. A That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. What is there's it? A, there is. Eat a red apple day. Oh, nice. I love apples. Well, you know my favorite apple? What? My favorite apple is Honeycrisp apples. Ooh, uh, I like now, that. They're a little mm -hmm. bit, they're a little bit bigger than your standard, you know, apple because they're, they're typically sort of baking apples, but they are my favorite apples to eat. I like the Cosmo one, the Cosmic or something. Cosmic, I think. I discovered those when we were up in Washington State. And hmm. obviously, Washington State is a good apple country, right? And Granny Smith, I like tarts. I like them to be tart. I like, my, I like mine sweeter. I, I like my apples sweeter. But we, we, Jennifer and I were in uh, Southbridge, Massachusetts, uh, every year from 2005 to 2007. Uh, I was doing a TV show up there and, and performing and doing some other things. And uh, one year, I think it was 2007, I might be misremembering, 
misremembering, but one year we actually went to an apple orchard up there in Massachusetts and picked apples and had a, had a blast and it was so much fun. So if you get a chance to do that during the fall, and uh, I think that's a great, a great way to get some apples in you. I like it. And listen, don't forget to, you know, enjoy the apple trees themselves and take care of it. In England, they're celebrating a national uh, tree week. I'm just saying hmm. they, that's their tree week in, in England. And then they light the, the Rockefeller Christmas tree on December 1st. So that's something to watch. Uh, I've sometimes. always wanted to go and be there for that, but I've never, I haven't done yeah. it yet. And this is when everyone puts National Christmas Lights Day. They put twinkly lights up everywhere. I know that's not fun for you, Joey, but for me, I think it's magical, and many people no, find I, it you know magical. What? I, I dig, I dig the, I dig the vibe. I dig the vibe. There's so a vibe. I'm, I'm all, There's I'm a warmth. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, so I'm all now, about. Now, I think this is a good one for you. It's National Cookie Cutter Day. So that's when you make all those little shapes. Now, do you like? feel do you fondle cook christmas cookies to see um, what are well, they are reindeer or are they like that sounds I mean, bad but let's let's just be honest i fondle everything and it's I not know. As, I, I, people I, don't like I to get saying, away with it as much this? as they used to yeah you see <laughs> people don't but, like to be but, groped as much as i used to when i was a kid uh yeah, yeah, really. yeah no i i do love to uh you know i have a um we have a snack basket here in the house and uh Ooh. we 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 keep a lot of little yeah, you know, gingerbread cookies and we packs of nuts and you know cans of tuna fish. I know that sounds weird, uh, but just little snacks that you can grab. So I'm I'm constantly groping through that uh, basket trying to figure out. Oh, here are the Oreos or you know whatever. So yeah, I definitely uh, I love to check out different shaped cookies and uh, it's. I, I'll tell you my favorite is actually animal crackers. Trying to guess what animal it is. It's kind of fun. Oh, that's cool. That's fun. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're supposed to play with our food. It is also Rosa Parks Day. And she oh, is my hero, one of my heroes. Yeah. She is incredible. And we interviewed a lady. Um, her name's H. H. Leonard. H. Leonard. She um, wrote the stories afterwards because Rosa Parks actually came to stay because she got robbed. Someone broke into her house. And so she ended up moving to um, H's house. She's got this mansion basically in D.C. area. And Rosa Parks lived there. And she traveled with Rosa and she wrote Rosa's lessons down, nice. what she learned. And so we'll have that link on the page, um, the blend radio and TV.com page um, with that as something to read. Rosa Parks is inspirational. And I think that's oh, gosh, something yeah. too, you know, and when I think about her, I do think a lot of, you know, the civil rights music, you've got to think like Nina Simone. Um, you got, you got to think like, you know, Sam Cook change is going to come, sure. you know, yeah. I, I think that's something too, as we get towards the new year, we should look at what positive change do we want? And there's a lot yeah. of unrest in our country <laughs> yeah. around it, the it, world. It's time to reflect. It's a, the, the holidays are a great time to reflect on where we've been and where we're going and, and uh, to try and make course corrections when we need to. Yeah. You know, because especially, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas and all those gatherings of family. I know so many families are divided, um, but sure. maybe try to find, go back to your roots of where your common ground is and yeah. see about rebuilding. Maybe if not December 2nd is national bartender day. because You might be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've always, you know, we've got that. Uh, I've got that song, a uh, blind man driving. Mm hmm. And I've always wanted a bartender to to concoct a drink for me called the blind man driving. And uh, and, and I feel like it should be like one glass and you're just out for the night. It should be kind of like, you know, a tasty Zeke will. <laughs> you know, you, I mean, know, you know, but we used to have a cocktail contest. In fact, we did one with the band The Cravens, our friends The Cravens, because we said on a show with them that they should have a Craven Raven because of their name. Oh. And right. so we had a contest and we have the, I'll put those recipes up for everyone because it's fun for the holidays. Um, yeah. And so it was really cool. We did this there in Florida. We were in Arizona at the time. Well, if there's but, any um, people out there listening, I would love for someone to concoct me, you know, someone who's a no, real no, we, uh, This is a big deal. We, barista. <laughs> well, it started because when we started as a print magazine in San Diego, we were the blend. We yeah. had a friend who managed a bar and a restaurant and we said, well, wouldn't it be fun to do a blend uh, you know, who's going to make the big blender cocktail. And so readers sent in their recipes. His head bartender went through the recipes and said, okay, we're going to look at these are, these are shite and these ones yeah. are good. 
And so he made them and we had um, friends and clients and everybody come to the restaurant and taste test. And boy, did we have to get cabs. I'm serious. <laughs> There's photos in that storage unit of people with their head on the bar. Yeah. Um, and so we did taste tests and we would do this and we would gather prizes from people and stuff like that. And one person would win like a basket, like gift certificates for lodging and hotels and all kinds of good stuff. But doing the test tasting was really like, uh, or taste testing, test taste, whatever the tasting <laughs> and judging was really good and it was fun. But I did, I have a recipe that is, goes down in history. It's called the barman's belch. So I'm wondering if that could not be your recipe, Joey. It, I'll take it. Um, it is, it, it's, I'm going to have to look it up again, but I know we put like Kahlua, Bailey's, Sambuca. I think it's got vodka. It's like a white Russian with a whole bunch of other stuff in there. And it tastes sweet, but it kicks your butt. Like you, you think well, it's think all nice. It's called the blind man driving. It should really kick you in the teeth. I mean, it, I, yeah, I, I mean, it, it was a, it's called the barman's belch. Yeah. So it kind of could, well, we could change the name. I'm going to have to go in the store. It's, it's kind of it's like generic medicines. We'll have to change one ingredient so we can put a new patent on it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so the, I have to say now, do you drink eggnog? Cause I have never enjoyed eggnog. No. Yeah, absolutely not. Because I mean, it usually has no. rum in it. I think, right? Isn't that? No, what... I don't. I don't care what they put in it. It's not. Yeah. I've tasted a little bit of. I don't it's even terrible. like candy. No, it tastes. It tastes medicine like to me, it and does. I don't. I don't like milk. So I'm not a milk person. The only way you're well, going to have that is ice cream. I don't absolutely. like custard. I don't like cream. I Ugh. don't like whipped cream. I don't like any of that stuff. I'm not a is dairy it, are person. You a, are you cheese. allergic to it or are you? Yeah, I was. I was allergic to cow's milk as a kid. And I think okay. it just turned me off of all of that stuff. Because I like all those things. <laughs> no. <laughs> and and trifle. I mean, yeah. No trifle either. But, you know, no I'll eat chocolate. No. no it oh. wobbles. You know? Well, that's true. That, you know, that, that could be a thing. Not seeing your food sometimes could be a good thing. You know? Oh, listen, there there are several times in my life that not seeing has been a, a blessing that saved me from being scarred for life. So <laughs> I, there it is. Hey, yeah. hey, I want to say December 2nd is National Mutt Day. And I love that because, listen, you know, don't go buy puppies from the pet store over Christmas and from backyard breeders and stuff. You know, we it, just go rescue one and let the mutt be. They are sweet. They are intelligent. They're smart. There's a, a really good book uh, from a photographer, uh, Olivia, who... Um, is she was on our show and I've got that link in there too, showing mutts and, and their amazing strife. I mean, it's, it's, it is like you're rooting for the underdogs, right? So yeah. don't be afraid to, to take care of a mutt and yeah. love a mutt. Everybody should um, love a mutt. It's also a business of popping corn day. Who doesn't like popcorn? You know? uh, my wife is addicted to it. Nancy loves popcorn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do too. It's also National Fritters Day. Who doesn't like a good fritter? Yeah. That's a good thing. National Skip School Day. We all love that. I mean, I did that. <laughs> that was, that's on all my report cards. Cause I can't. Oh, really? <laughs> every single one. So no, you were a no little joke. bit more truant. Yeah. I was, they, I, I, I was bored. Yeah. So, you know. Well, my, my mom and dad, when I was young and I was, you know, so sick and, and in the hospital a lot, you know, so I missed a lot of school um, from time to time due to illness. And then also my dad was uh, was doing a lot of amazing things um, and uh, was traveling the world and, and working with a lot of interesting people. Um, and um, so uh, if I was healthy enough um, and some interesting opportunity came up, my parents would take me out of school uh, to go traveling and, and see the rest of the world and see it from a very high place. Um, because my dad had a, had a, 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 a you know, a function in the Carter administration and, and some things like that and worked with uh, the Kennedys and all these different things. Oh, wow. And, and so he, uh, so, you know, whenever we had a chance to do that, they would take me out of school because they felt like I would learn just as much yeah. or more from being around the world and, and seeing these things. So, uh, I think school is very important. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, sometimes you do need to skip school to do something else that's, that's important as well. Well, Nancy took me on the road for two years in South Africa, took me out yeah. of school. And that's yeah. where I got my love for history was actually going to all the historic sites 
going to battlefields to really understand what a battle is about that you read in a book yeah. or watch in a movie. Um, you know, it really, it, it changed my life. You sure. know, I was at a very impressionable age and I had to have my grades a hundred percent. I yeah. stayed awake for a month getting my grades perfect so that I could leave and do that with her. And then I was a road scholar. <laughs> right. And I was good. And, and my grades went up, not down, except for math. And that's when they started doing trigonometry and algebra. And I went, I don't care about that. I really don't. Yeah. And when you start getting um, into imaginary numbers, boo. <laughs> no, I'm not into that. So that's for hey, the scientists. My, my got, math is very important. It's awesome. You know, music oh, no, is I got. I'm uh, good at but, math. But you don't, but you know, we don't. I don't. I don't really have to know algebra to, to get through my day. No, but I understand it for other people and other careers, and I'm all power to you. And uh, yeah. good for you. Um, it, I'm like good for you. It is Candle Day. I love Candle Day. Candle Day. Um, I think you know we've got to be careful. We have LED candles now too, but candles. I mean, just to light a candle, and you you put the song "Candle in the Wind." Um, I did. I had to. Yeah. That. That Elton John wrote that for Lady Diana too, didn't he? Um, he, he well, he, he changed it up. Say. Yeah, re, yeah. That's a that's a way of yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, it was Marilyn it, Monroe. In a technical, in a technical uh, intellectual property law thing, he uh, made a derivative work. If you want to go that far, but yeah, he repurposed it for that for her funeral. And you know, um, it's not a happy song, but I, I, I had to say, you know, "Candle in the Wind." I just thought. Uh, it'd be kind of kind of a uh, crazy not to have that in the playlist, but uh, I do like candles. Um, there's a there's a vibe and a charm to them. Um, I I have never been I've never been good. You know, one of my favorite things to do is to go to a church service on Christmas Eve, and it's a magical thing when. Everybody in the, in the audience gets their candles and they light them and they hold them up and they sing Silent Night or whatever song you want to sing. And, and I, I love the vibe of it. I love the atmosphere. I love the feeling of, of, of peace and tranquility that mm-hmm. comes from that. But I, you know, am a terrible candle holder. Um, yeah. I always get hot wax on my hand. I just yeah, cannot. I cannot. You know, I think it's because. I can't hold that candle quite perfectly upright because I can't see to to get that perfect Mm -hmm. candle motion. Uh, I guess that's it. Or maybe I'm just weird. I don't know, but I, no matter how many times I do it, uh, I, I I always get hot wax on my hand. And uh, of course I can't light my own candle because uh, that's just a disaster. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's not a good idea. Yeah, no. at, at, our, at our wedding ceremony, like, um, I was trying to light the unity candle with my wife, and it was just like a whole thing. <laughs> it didn't go particularly well. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, but but I love candles. They're awesome. So for me, the LED candles are a, a safer bet. And they're cool. They're they're neat. But um, uh, again, we're going to go back to the past. You and I are still very young and, and uh, virile. But um, back in the 80s, or late seventies or early eighties, you know, they, that was the first time they started having those electric candles, right? You'd buy them mm-hmm. and you'd plug them into the wall, right? You had to plug them in through a cord. And there were, I don't know if, if the ones that I always saw were like five candles. There was one real tall one in the middle two one, one a little bit shorter on, on each side of that tall one. And then one a little bit shorter on each side of the other ones. And um, one day I was, uh, I was checking my mom's to go in uh, and put, I don't know. I was probably like nine years old. Go and make sure all the candles have uh, bulbs in them. I was just helping her decorate. And uh, I went to see if there were, the only way for me to, to do that is to feel right. Yeah. And I accidentally stuck my finger into, oh, ow. Ow, the, ow. into the, yeah, into the hole where the bulb went. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Turns out though, it was plugged in. And it knocked me to the ground, man. I still remember that so vividly. I mean, it, it, it could have electrocuted me. It was awful. But uh, anyway, so I don't do that anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. I know, really, right? Yeah. We've had some very interesting conversations on this show. Yeah, and I, I think it. I think the candle thing comes because it's also the first Sunday of Advent. And yeah. 
December 3rd is make a gift day. It goes back to the mason jars. And I think, you know, with all this technology and artificial intelligence, you're on that panel too. And I just think make a gift, even if it's um, writing a poem, you know, or sure. just make a card or write a song, right? Um, sure. I think that's something that um, making a gift, just taking that time out to do something, make cookies or, you know, all I mean, of that I, good I, stuff. I'm definitely not a Luddite, but the, but the fact, and, and, you know, technology helps me not be as blind as I would be uh, without it. But at mm-hmm. the same time, it's important to disconnect and get back to, you know, things that have a little bit more of a, 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 a tangible feel, things that you've done with your hands and your mind and your, you know, I think, I think those are all to the good. And I think the I, holidays I really should, yeah, I think the holidays really should be about reconnecting with um, nature and reconnecting with family and reconnecting with, actually reconnecting with yourself, remembering who you are and continuing that exploration of who you are and what you want and the things that are important to you. So it's, it's, it's a great time. And of course, you know, as I say, I love electronics. I love technology. My, 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 I'm sitting here in my home office and everything in this room is electric and, 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 you know, te- He's technology. I am electric. Uh, <laughs> just ask any of my ex-girlfriends. Anyway. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, hon. Anyway, There's so um, many new things about you now. Uh-huh. I know, I know. Um, but anyway, yeah, but I mean, you know, I, I, I do think it's cool to to pick up a, a guitar that's not amplified, and, you know. Yeah. And and to to light a candle to make it to make a homemade meal from scratch. You know, those things are awesome. And winter is a good time. The fall and winter is a good time to do it. You know, um, it's actually National Rhubarb Vodka Day. I don't know who comes up with that stuff, but well, you know, power to you. That does not sound appealing. No, it doesn't. I like uh, yeah. they make this. Um, Drunken crumble thing in Scotland with rhubarb, and that's mm. not too bad. Um, but it's National Green Bean Casserole Day. Listen, yeah. um, why? I, I How? like green beans. Yeah, I don't like them out of a can, and that's the problem. I no, think no, that no, no, they're terrible out of a can. Yeah, that go to your don't... fresh market, get you some fresh green beans, um, and make a casserole. That's awesome. I love. We 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 sometimes will do that for Thanksgiving and have a nice green bean casserole. Yeah, I I don't mind that if it's they've got to be fresh. That's the thing, and you know the sweet potatoes like yams. You guys do the yams here, and put uh, we, marshmallows we sweet, on top. Yeah, we do sweet potatoes here in the south. I've I've had yams, but that's not as popular here in the south. Uh, um, well, we do more sweet potatoes. It, well, when we first got here, I thought it was cheese, not marshmallows. <laughs> and I about fell down, and wow. I still don't understand why you put marshmallows. I don't get it. But you know, because marshmallows are good for you. Not on those. That is just <laughs> some weird stuff, man. You know. Well, sweet potatoes. I I actually say I, I don't mind a sweet potato that casserole with the marshmallows on it. Um, mm-hmm. It's not my favorite thing, but I don't mind it. See, I just make chili. That's my thing. That is oh, my man, I love talent. Chili. Yeah, that's you know. That's use, my wife. Me. My wife makes a mean chili, and she uses. Uh, uh, kidney beans. Um, she uses garbanzo beans sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she uses uh, tomatoes and mushrooms mm-hmm. and, and bell yeah, peppers. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But we also use turkey meat because mm-hmm. it's a little bit leaner. Leaner, yeah, um, it's good. Yeah, so it's good stuff. Oh, now I'm wanting some. And I always put cumin in it. It's got to have a cumin. The cumin. I haven't done important. that. I haven't tried that. Yeah, cumin is like a whole other. And I I do it with chili, curry, and cumin. I go kind of African a little bit and, and, you know, a little Indian and um, some, a lot of oregano in there. Now I'm, now I'm going to have to go make chili now. I, I make like, I love crock pots because you can let it simmer all day and have this amazing meal, but you can smell it as it's developing. And then it's like, I am starving. Um, (laughs) But I really make chili like a lot. And then you have it with some coleslaw and you have the best fiber in the world. Just Mm. saying just it's a good thing during the winter and the fall weather when it's all changing over it's it's a perfect dish um i do want to close with the most important holiday of today it is national lisa day and i think that is a fantastic day um er, with national all your lisa, lisa friends day. i have my own day did you start this no 
Apparently, it's also National Heather Day, National Harley Day, National Isaac Day, and also so, National Bonnell Day. I have to and say. And Dorothy. Don't forget Dorothy. Dot. Um, yeah. So, you know, Heather has always been a name that makes me think of someone smoking hot. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I think oh, maybe the, the first. Oh, the two Heathers. It's the two Heathers. Yeah. It's the movie. Uh, yeah, the Heather's the movie. Yeah, and uh, and the first girl I had a real crush on was named Heather. I think because that's that's kind of a um a, maybe the other reason. You but know yeah, what it always... is? It's the Heather's. Heather's have always it's like a, a proper name. Oh, Heather, but yeah. you know they're they're the preacher's daughters, basically. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you know that that do you know that um, my mom is a preacher's daughter? And uh, and and she, now you're here. <laughs> yeah, and here I am. And now she and my dad eloped. Um, when they got married, so they ran off and got married, and but it uh, apparently worked. Sixty-one. It years? worked. Yeah. I mean, six, oh, six, yeah. So, well, yeah, sixty, sixty-four this year. Oh, sixty-four. Wow. Yeah, sixty-four. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is this is this is exciting. But yeah, they they were uh, they're they're pretty amazing people, I have to say. And I uh, would say so. I yeah. I'm just so proud. But yeah, national. So so Lisa's got it. That's a great that you have a, your own day. Now, I have my you, own day. I feel like you should get a card or something. I don't know. I think people should um, send me chocolate mousse and wine, and I'll be chocolate happy. mousse and wine. What could Sounds possibly good. go wrong? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. You can put it yeah. in a mason jar, but not yeah. together. How do you? you know? what, how do you? Yeah. Now, how do you? How do you plan for them to ship you the chocolate mousse? How do you plan to make I, that? No, I we don't get mail. Like it goes oh. to our friend Eva, but you know. So Eva yeah, will mail get all is your a whole. Presents. Yeah, it's very hard because you know the everything is very it, everything. You know, everything's you're, done you're, online. You're very transient. Yeah, you're you're always somewhere. Oh, different. that's nice. We're we're vagabonds. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but it. Yeah. You know what? It's it's. I think you just go around and say Happy Lisa Day to Lisas and Heather's and Ronalds and Isaacs. You know, I don't I, know who makes best, all these up, but one of my dearest um, power to is named Lisa, so that's great. And when it's Joey's day, when it's a Joey yeah. day, you can go around and and get a bunch of kangaroos. I, that is, that is my fervent wish. I definitely would love to be uh, just smothered in, in stuffed animal kangaroos. I would be all about it. Well, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you all for joining us. Keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Keep up with Joey at joeystuckey.com. It's always so much fun having Joey here. Check out the music playlist. You've got some music from Joey. We've also got some from Tom Rule, who's he's recorded some other great music in there, all going with the holidays. And there's a bunch more that we didn't talk about because we could be here all day talking about just about anything, in, as you can tell. So yeah. uh, thank you, Joey. Always fun. Happy holidays to you. And Thanks we'll you, talk with you. Uh, we have a special Christmas show coming up afterwards. So um, That's right. next month. So we're, we're going to have a good time. So stay tuned for that. It. That's it. Take care, Joey. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Big Blend Radio's Big Weekly Blend Podcast. You can keep up with our shows at BigBlendRadio.com. And if you want to get our Big Weekly Blend magazine, just sign up for our newsletter at BlendRadioAndTV.com. <laughs>